Hey there, hope everything is going well with everyone. And uh, this is our fifth video that we are, have done for our teens. And so if you haven't uh, watched the other four, you can do so either further down the Facebook stream, stream or further down the YouTube playlist. Um, but just check that out. And these don't necessarily have to be played in order, uh, but they're just going through our series in Second Peter chapter number one, uh, of things that we should add to our faith. And uh, so we've gone through uh, four of those so far, virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience. And so we're on to the fifth thing here uh, this week. And I hope everyone is doing well. And uh, we, um, I know for many of us, this has been a very difficult time, especially you all seniors who you had graduation parties planned and maybe those things have gotten postponed or canceled or, or just fun um, things that uh, have happened or, or you were planning on having happen your last year, maybe senior trips or something like that. Um, so I know that for many of this has been a difficult time, but um, let's not forget that God knows um, exactly what's going on and he has a purpose and a reason behind all of this. Um, and so let's just trust him during these times and depend on him. And um, another thing to keep in mind is to uh, give us maybe some perspective as to um, what many people throughout history have gone through that um, being able to meet like we get to meet here in America is uh, unusual if you look at the history of mankind and, uh, and how we have treated Christianity through the years. And so we, um, we have, we have a, a really special thing going for us here in America of having always been able to uh, meet together and whenever we wanted, however often we wanted, with however many people we wanted. And, uh, and I know that during this time, this should allow us to um, find a new appreciation for the freedoms we have in America and uh, to, to hold those tight and to love those things that God has allowed us to have here in this country. And so uh, this uh, maybe that's what God is trying to teach us as a nation is, is to enjoy and, and, um, and have a appreciation of those things. I don't know, but uh, I think it's something that we can learn and should learn through all of this. Uh, but let's hop back to Second uh, Peter chapter number one. I'm going to read uh, the first few verses of this chapter here. It says, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And um, just so you all know, I, I do would like for you to grab a Bible as you're reading these, because we will flip to a couple passages, and I want you to see it as you're reading it, or as I'm reading it. That way uh, we're all on the same page, and it help you help get it in your mind a little easier. But we're at, in verse number 10, 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that ye might be able or be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you, that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we've gotten to our fifth um, thing here, and that is godliness. And we're going to talk about that here this afternoon. Um, godliness is a dictionary definition for it would be uh, piety, a belief in God and reverence for his characters and law, a, a religious life, a careful observance of the laws of God and performance of religious duties proceeding from love and reverence for the divine character and commands, Christian obedience. So here we get here to this godliness, and godliness is an important one on this list. They're all important, but I think this one has a special um, place here because when you add godliness to this list, it adds some purpose and some meaning that maybe um, isn't in the other things. Because if you take all these other things, if you take virtue and you take knowledge and you take temperance, you take patience, and th those, those can all have their um, sec secular values. They can all... Uh, add to your life in a way that can benefit you here on this earth and that a, a businessman businessman can be virtuous and, and knowledgeable and and temperate and patience and and he can do those things and not at all be a christian 
And uh, you can have all of those things apart from Christianity, but godliness is kind of the glue that binds it to Christianity. So it, it's kind of the purpose and the meaning behind of all of those other things. And so that's why I think um, godliness maybe has a, a special place in this list because it's what brings uh, the focus back to where it should be. So I am being virtuous. I am being uh, trying to attain knowledge of God. I am, I am trying to be temperate in all things. I'm trying to be patient and endure things all for God, because I want to be godly, because because I want to do things for Him, and um, that all those other things can um, can have external things that have nothing to do with Christianity. They can add value to your life um, apart from Christianity. That my virtue um, is it, it should not be uh, the goal of my virtue should not be to be exalted by man. The goal of my knowledge should not be to puff up my reputation. The goal of my temperance is not to gain worldly benefit or status. The goal of my patience has behind it uh, meaning greater than the riches of this world. That I'm doing these things because I love God. And I want to follow after his commandments. That, that's why I'm doing these things. That's, that's the godliness factor in what I am pursuing. And we talked last week uh, about how um, patience is something that is not sustainable, um, if not for a, a real purpose behind it and, and a, a hope behind it and, 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 uh, and all that. We, we talked about that last week. And, uh, and godliness is that hope, that, that purpose. And um, it, it adds purpose here. And we've been kind of calling this our ingredient list, you could say. And it kind of adds purpose to our ingredients list. It's kind of like um, tea, right? So if you know anything about me, I, I enjoy sweet tea. And I, I can honestly tell you that it is pointless to drink tea if it does not have sugar in it for, my, for me, okay? There's no point in it. The, the point of sweet tea is to have something other than water that tastes delicious and will quench your thirst. And if you just throw some tea bags in there, it just makes it brown, right? It's just brown water that just doesn't have a whole lot of flavor and it's just not good. You've got to add the sugar to really give it um, what it needs to have to make it worthwhile to drink. And uh, the same way goes with this list. You can have all of these things and they have no attachment to Christianity. But when you add the godliness, that's the glue that binds us to um, the, the Christianity part of it. So we're going to flip to a couple places that talk about godliness. And the first of those is a couple books back to uh, 1 Timothy. So 1 Timothy chapter number uh, 6 is where we're going to be at. And um, I love the book of Timothy for a teenager. Um, this, the book of Timothy is the Apostle Paul uh, giving some advice to a young man. And so Timothy is a book that you should often be in and often try to uh, glean things from. As a teenager and as a young man, I feel like I myself am still a young man. So I try to get in Timothy, the, the Timothys fairly often and, and try to glean what I can from them. So we're going to start reading verse number two of chapter number six. It says, And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather, I want to be in second Timothy. I'm sorry. First Timothy is good too, though, but I want to be in second Timothy. Do I? No, I'm, I was right. Second Timothy. Chapter number six, verse number two. And, uh, and they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. Those things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine, which is according to godliness. So there he's saying that, that doctrine should be linked with in according to Godliness. Those th the things that we are being taught should be linked to that. Um, and verse number four, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain uh, we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. And see, we can add um, all these other things to our lives. We can add all these other ingredients to our lives and get what he's talking about here, gain. 
But the Apostle Paul is saying that we should not look for gain in this world, but look for godliness. That, that godliness is the thing that we should be pursuing after. Or we can add these, we can, in other words, we can add these things to our list. And instead of getting gain in this world, we add these things to our list for the love of God. And God grants our reward. In fact, he is our reward. The Apostle Paul says that, that I, he does all of the things that he do, does that he may win Christ. That's his goal. And, and, and so when we add godliness to our life, we're adding a, a purpose to doing all of these things that we do. And, and I'm doing this because I love God and I want his, him as my reward. I want my, my focus not to be on gaining in this world because I can gain things off of doing what the Bible says with, with virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience and brotherly kindness and, and all of those things. I can, I can, I can gain in this world doing that, but that's, I don't want gain. I want godliness. That, that's, that's my goal. That's my, that's what I, I want to strive for. So, and, I, and this is where I messed up in my notes. I also want to flip over to Second Timothy chapter number three. So I got those two, two confused, but let's flip over to Second Timothy chapter number three, and uh, and we'll hop over there. And so that's what that's what the Apostle Paul there was saying there that the, the, the focus of the Christian should not be on gain, but on godliness. Uh, Second Timothy chapter number three. Uh, we're going to start reading in verse number one there, and it says, "This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves." Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and leave captives, silly women, laden with sins, Excuse me. Let a lay with diverse lusts, um, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And so here, uh, what the Apostle Paul is talking about is people whose lives look like godliness. From the outside, when we look at their life, we think, man, they've got everything on that ingredients list. But they're denying the power thereof, of that godliness. And what's the power of that? Well, that's God. So they're, they're doing all the things that they should do. But they're not doing them for God. They're not doing them for God. They're not doing them uh, for for the, the the glory of God and for the um, furtherance of His kingdom. And um, they have added these other things for their own value and not to honor and glorify and please God. They're doing them for some other purpose and for some other reason. And it's very easy for us as Christians to live the Christian life and leave Christ out of it. And for us to just do, okay, because this is what um, my parents expect of me to do. This is what uh, people uh, expect to see out of me, and it pleases them, and it helps me uh, live a, a life to a certain way. And, and uh, my, my boss likes how I live, and uh, likes that I'm virtuous, and likes that I do these things, and I'm truthful, and, and I'm doing all these things, and I'm doing them for my own gain. And I'm not doing them for truly God. And I, I have a form of godliness but I'm denying the power thereof. That godliness has an internal meaning. But that, and that internal meaning is that I am do, I'm doing these things, these, these lists of things that could be called religious. Um, they could be called, uh, advantageous for me, uh, in, in different ways, virtuous, uh, more moral. I'm doing these things, but I'm not just doing them. I'm doing them for a reason. And that reason is because I love God. I want to keep his commandments. I want to glorify him. And so the godliness has that internal meaning, but that internal meaning should produce an outward action. And so it's one thing for us to say, okay, I'm going to be godly, but then live, say, man, I'm going to be a good Christian. Everything I do is for God, but yet your actions don't reflect what a Christian would do. So, so your motives can be right and your actions can be wrong and your actions can be right and your motives can be wrong. But the goal is to have both of those right. And that's what godliness truly is. And godly, uh, godliness is a display of holiness in our lives. Being godly is displaying holiness to other people. That, that we want to live a life in according, accordance with God's principles that are in his word and according with his example of his son. That, that's our goal uh, as being godly people. I remember when I was uh, either a junior or senior in high school, I picked up a book called In His Steps. And I don't often read novels. Um, I, I'm not a big novel reader necessarily, but um, that's a novel that I would definitely, 
advise you to, to read up on. That's, that's a great novel. And here's pretty much what the novel is all about. It's this, this, this church that decides to, for, for an entire year, if I remember correctly, for a whole year, they're going to do everything that they do is going to be screened through the question of what would Jesus do? And, um, before it, it, it kind of was out of style when I was growing up, but a little bit before me, they used to have these bracelets that would say WWJD and it was going around like that was a big craze. And in his steps was written a long time ago before that, but for some reason it came back. I don't necessarily know why, but I think that, um, that is something that every Christian should strive to do in their lives of everything that we do should be strained through the lens of scripture and through the example of Jesus Christ. That, that Christians' actions should be filtered through the pages of scripture. I believe if godliness was our intentions, if, if our intention is to be godly, then our actions will be different. Our attitude will be different. Our demeanor will be different. And different from who? Different than the rest of the world. Different from those whose goal is not godliness. That our worldview will be different. That our, uh, the music that we listen to, the television that we watch, the, the, the clothes that we wear, the, the amount of time, how we spend our time, the, the, the treasure that we pursue after, the ambitions that we have, all of that will be different than the rest of our world because our goal is not gain. Our goal is godliness. Our goal is godliness. And, and why? Because our goal, um, will, our goal will be reflected in our lifestyle. The goals of your life will be reflected in what you do. The goals in your life will be reflected in how you act and what you say and where you go and what you wear and what you watch and what you listen. All of that will all be reflected in your goal or your goal will be reflected in all of those things. And so, um, teenager, I urge you to add to your faith godliness. And, and we've been each Friday evening at 830. We have been... Um, Oh, there's a baby. <laughs> That's our, our new child, Diane, Elizabeth. And uh, each Friday we have been um, doing a Zoom uh, youth activity, kind of. And, uh, and when I say Zoom activity, that's a video chat, okay? I've had some people at, ask me um, what time they need to be at church for that activity. That's not a uh, go-to-church activity. It's a video chat. And we've been doing it at 8.30. If you haven't heard about it, if this is your first time hearing about it and you're a teenager, um, shoot me a text. My number's... Uh, 618-719-8282 and shoot me a text and let me know um, that you didn't get the link and I'll send that link over to you and that way we can get you in on the Zoom and I think uh, it's been a lot of fun the past few weeks. We're, we're planning on doing something a little different this week and uh, I really have enjoyed it. Uh, if you weren't there last week, you got you would have been the first um, church members to have gotten to see my baby, my new baby and uh, so you'll never know what's going to happen. Um, this week, the surprise probably won't be as big, but we've got some things planned. And so uh, join that if you can. And I love you all and miss you much. I hope to see you again soon. But add to your faith godliness.